If you don't know, the 2012 theory is a huge conspiracy around the world ending in the year 2012. Now I'm going to tell you all of the facts about this and how it is actually believable. Now let's start off, as crazy as this sounds, 2012 was the year scientists discovered the particle Higgs boson, which Stephen Hawkins predicted could destroy the universe for good, or suck us into some time vacuum, almost like a black hole. This is where the Mandela effect comes into play in relation to this. Now if you don't know what the Mandela effect is, it's the theory that we have changed into a parallel universe over time, and there are a lot of examples of this. For example, Pikachu, you may remember him having a black stripe on his tail, but he never did. Famous quote in Snow White, mirror mirror on the wall. No, it never said that. It said magic mirror on the wall. Magic mirror on the wall. Who is the fairest one of all? See, that's pretty weird. And there's many, many more examples, such as Curious George not having a tail. But putting that aside, now you know what the Mandela effect is. Now we can move on with the 2012 theory. Now, since 2012 is when these Mandela effects have been occurring. Before, nothing happened. But since the particle was discovered in 2012, I think we can all agree the world's been different. From all of these Mandela effects for a start, but also things like World War III threats, and this pandemic even. There's been a lot of strange things, and the world's just not been the same since 2012. As well as that, 2012 was the end of the Mayan calendar, which signifies the end of life and the end of the world. However, we are obviously not dead. We're talking right now and I'm making this video. But did the world as we knew it end in 2012 and we were somehow sucked in to a parallel universe, which is similar to ours, but things occurred differently? Now, you may not really understand the concept of a parallel universe. Let me explain it to you quickly. So say you walked over the road on Earth. In one parallel universe, you would have been hit by a car. In another, you would have walked across safely, and in another, something random would have happened. See, they're all similar worlds to ours, but where things just play out differently. Now, we don't know if they're real or not, but these Mandela Effect examples could give us an insight to them. And it could mean, since 2012, we've been in a parallel universe. Could, when scientists discovered Higgs boson, it have destroyed our planet one day or one night and sucked us into a parallel universe? Because let's face it, as I said, the world has been very different, and we wouldn't even know it really, would we? Nevertheless, this is a creepy and weird concept to get your head around. But could it be possible that the world did end in 2012? This is honestly one of the creepiest, weirdest and just strangest conspiracies I've ever seen. But it also makes sense and really, really makes you think. So, in 1900, which was 120 years ago, this book was written by Lingusall Lockwood, and it is called Baron Trump's Marvellous Underground Journey. Now, at first glance, you think, oh, this is strange, someone called Baron Trump, like Trump's son. But no, when you get inside, it gets even weirder. The story is about a boy who has a friend who is called Donald Trump, and they both discover time travel in the future. They all live in a house, well, in New York, and it's called Trump Castle. And it gets even stranger, because the exact address is where Trump Tower stands today in New York. But the man named Donald Trump, or often referred to as Don in the story, is a man who runs for president in America. He's very strange and rich, and nobody thinks he's going to get it. But he somehow does. Now isn't that strange and much like the Donald Trump we know. And also, there is a part in the book called The Last President. Which is a bit strange and significant as well. And the very strange thing about this story is they obviously discover time travel. And where do they go? Well, it takes them to Russia. And as we know, Trump doesn't have the best record with Russia. He's had his problems in the past, and his wife is also from near Russia. So, there's some very strange questions raised with this. Now this is the strangest part. Take a look at this side-by-side -side comparison of Baron Trump in the story, and the Baron Trump we all know from Donald. They look similar. Now that is terrifying. I obviously don't know and can't be sure, 
about this theory, but I think it's very strange and coincidental that there's this boy who looks like Baron Trump, is called Baron Trump, has a father named Donald Trump, who goes for president, and has a house in the exact location of Trump Tower. This is strange and one of the craziest theories I've heard. Out of all of these theories, I can happily say that this is the one I believe the most, and I think is actually happening right now. If you don't know what this government theory is, get ready to be scared. Basically, the theory is that the government hide microphones and tracking devices, or even cameras, in toys and other devices. They hide them in there so they can monitor us and listen to us, people like MI5 and the FBI. Now the thing that makes this very believable is that there has actually been reports from a lot of people saying they've heard their Alexas or Google Homes randomly going off in the night. Either saying something like, sorry I couldn't hear you there, or even Alexa just randomly laughing. The creepy thing is, if you ask Alexa enough times, what do you do with my information or do you work for the CIA? She will actually say, once I have listened, I will send the information to higher powers. Now God knows what that means, but it's bloody creepy. And there has also been reports, people have found cameras, or even microphones, hidden inside their kids' toys, such as Furbies and lots of other things. So kids, having them in their rooms, the government could be listening or watching. Or even worse, think about hackers. There are lots of skillful people out there that know how to hack, and can pretty much hack into anything. So think about this. If the government are putting cameras and microphones in all of our things, these hackers would be able to get into it and could be listening and watching us right now. Now, of course, we can't be sure about this, but I think this theory is really, really creepy and also believable because it's the sort of thing that would be going on. Realistically, the government could get into your phone anytime. They could be looking through your camera right now. Who knows? There could be people listening or watching us right now. This honourable mention goes to the Area 51 conspiracy theory. It wasn't a long enough theory to put into a main video, so it will go here. Now, there are a lot of theories about Area 51, but this one is very strange and also creepy. The theory is that there are obviously some higher powers at work at Area 51, but maybe there's not aliens there. Maybe we are in Area 51. We are locked up in some kind of crazy world, and Area 51 is an escape to a real world, almost like a utopia. And the government don't want us going there because they don't want us to escape. It's almost like the Maze Runner. That's creepy, I'm not sure what I think of it, but it's strange. The second honorable mention goes to air. Now the theory is that the government are putting some kind of chemical in the air. Now the only kind of proof we have of this are contrails, coming out of aeroplanes. What are they for, is it just fuel? Nobody really knows, but it's strange. Anyway, the actual theory itself is that they're poisoning the air with some kind of chemical that only lets us live for a certain amount of time, so that we die over the age of 100 or whatever it is. But it's strange. Maybe in other universes there is life, and people can live for an infinite amount of time. I've heard about this theory for a while, and it quite frankly terrifies me. Now, predictive programming. It doesn't sound like much, but when you get into it, it's very believable and very, very strange. Now, it is the theory that the government are using books and television programs and films as a mass mind control. Now, you probably think this sounds ridiculous, but trust me, it's not. And this is why. Because what they're doing is they're telling us things that are going to happen in the future or showing them to us in a film form. And when they actually happen, whether they're good or bad, we won't be as shocked because there'll be something in our mind that triggers and remembers that we've seen it somewhere before. Now, we've actually had quite a lot of examples of this, the most significant and famous being from The Simpsons. For a start, The Simpsons put this poster up, and this was one month before 9-11. It said, coming soon, with a picture on fire. As well as that, The Simpsons was holding a magazine which literally said 9-11. And that was a few months before the actual occurrence. 
As well as this, they actually predicted the exact move of Trump. Now this relates to the last theory. This is strange as well. But Trump being elected to power, it looks exactly the same. He's standing on an escalator which looks exactly the same. It's taken in the same angle with the people in the background and even Trump waving. Like that is crazy. There's also been other things such as the Simpsons predicting Apple Watches before they came out and many, many other things. But there is something much more worrying about this theory. Think about films like The Hunger Games and The Purge. They're on the verge of being believable and you could kind of imagine them happening. Could the government be hinting that things like The Purge and things like The Hunger Games or even The Maze Runner are gonna happen in the future? I'm not sure, but I think that's a really crazy and scary thought.